guys. So recently I saw this Rick and Morty short or anime episode on YouTube. And then I also saw this Transformer War for Cybertron trilogy on Netflix, which they labeled as anime. If we continue on this course, no one will be left. And those got me thinking, is it anime or not? Because we've heard these arguments of anime versus cartoons. But honestly, should we care if Netflix or others are labeling their Western cartoons or animation anime? And honestly, is there even a difference between the two? But before we answer those, we have to ask, what is the anime that a lot of Westerners refer to? By definition online, anime is a style of Japanese film and television animation that are typically aimed towards adults and children. So that pretty much sounds like American cartoons aside from the Japanese part. So then what do people expect from Japanese anime and Western cartoons? Well, stylistically, they're made differently. For like Japanese anime, they maybe come from a Japanese animation company. But if you think of animes like Boku no Hero Academia, a scene that I think about a lot is the episode where Deku was going against Chisaki. And when you look at it, it's very complex. It's a lot of action. And if you also think about Haikyuu or Akira, a lot of the times you would see that not only are the characters most of the time are proportionate, but there are also a lot of camera angles, which makes the anime more dynamic. And then there's also, and then there's also the language which they are obviously different, and then the storytelling culture. Now, the storytelling culture for, J for Japan, it's more subtle, and then America, we tend to be more direct. And if I have to talk about culture between the two, I would start by talking about the onsen culture, because the onsen, if you don't know what it is, it's the public bath or the hot spring, and they are separated by women's side and the men's side, and you get completely naked and you go and bathe communally. And there's actually no age limit to who can actually enter into those onsens. But if you try to bring that here to America, where you just bathe communally with a bunch of strangers, that would boggle so many minds in America because that's just not part of our culture. But back to anime, if we think about the style, the storytelling culture, and also the language. The more boxes we check, the closer we get to the anime that most people are accustomed to watching. So first, let's look at the Rick and Morty anime short. If you're not familiar with Rick and Morty, it's an American cartoon and it's on Adult Swim. If I were to explain what Rick and Morty is in a nutshell, it would be a sometimes drunk genius grandpa with his very timid grandson going on extravagant space adventures. And they released this Rick and Morty anime short on YouTube. And if you look at the style, yeah, it checks off. I mean, the animation studio that did this was Telecom Animation Film and they are a subsidiary of TMS Entertainment, and that is J one of Japan's oldest studios. Language, I would check that off because it's in Japanese. Also for the cultural connection, I would give that like a, a maybe check or like a so-so because the actual Rick and Morty series is an American series. But if we were to talk about this short specifically, it was directed by Takashi Sano, who is from Tower of God and Neon Genesis Evangelion. And also, it does take place in Japan, so I will give it a check. So everything seems to check off, so is this a Japanese anime? And then we look at the Transformers War for Cybertron trilogy on Netflix, which they labeled as an original anime series. And if you don't know what Transformers is, it's created by Hasbro, and it is a very American cartoon. In a nutshell, Transformers is a, it's a bunch of cars that transform into robots, and they go into like crazy battles. But you know, that's, that's what it is. Now the style being CG, and it's by Polygon, who does 3D CG, I will give it a you know, a half check mark on that, since Polygon is part of this project. And the language is in English, so not Japanese. And the cultural connection, well, most of the producers and writers are American, except for one of the executive producers who is Kohei Obara, who is from Toei Animations. So there is a bit of Japanese DNA in there, but it's just like a snitch. 
So does it feel like a Japanese anime or is it more just a Western animation? Honestly, there's no easy answer to this, but between Rick and Morty and the Transformers series, Rick and Morty does have more of the feel of the Japanese anime that people are used to seeing. So why is there even an argument whether something is anime or a cartoon? Because I mean, historically, we've already seen this crossover. There's a YouTube channel called Narmak, and they've made a SpongeBob anime like episode, and they actually had several SpongeBob anime openings. And out of a lot of the Western cartoons that I've seen turned into this little anime parody, this is probably one of the best ones I have seen. Like it, it 100% feels like an anime when I watched it. It's so cool. But then there's also animations like Ruby, Neo Yokio, and even Castlevania. But it's not even just in America because this also happens in South Korea with their webtoons, where you have a webtoon turn into an anime, a Japanese anime, like we've seen with Tower of God and God of High School. So why is there even an argument between anime versus cartoons? Well, I think the problem stems from expectation and how people consider Japanese anime in its own genre. And I believe this argument is more localized with Western viewers compared to Japanese viewers because the term anime in Japan, it's used as a blanket term for all animation around the world. It forces anime to be a certain way just to fill the expectations of what people have and that can also put a lot of limitations on the anime creators. And Japanese anime does a lot of things stylistically well compared to the western ones and in fact western animators have borrowed from Japan in terms of style but that I mean that happens vice versa where Japan does borrow from America and this just happens in a bunch of other countries and I think this creates a problem not only for the Japanese animation but also Western animation because it limits the exposure to Japanese anime to a wider audience and you just like stuff it in a little box huh. <laughs> And that can easily cause misunderstandings. And this goes both ways, not for just the Japanese anime, but also Western animation. And since we've seen this in real life, what makes you think it doesn't happen in anime? So going back to the two shows, whether or not they are anime, sure, they are not purely Japanese. They are mostly Western animation, which also makes them anime, which also makes them Japanese anime. Now, if I'm confusing you, it's probably because you skipped the video and you didn't listen to anything I said earlier. But the point is, there is no difference between Western cartoons and Japanese anime when we're talking about anime. We only created the difference because of how we defined anime, especially from a Western perspective. And I would agree with Hayao Miyazaki and the all-knowing Wikipedia that Anime is an art form in cinema and it applies to all animation around the world. I think the sooner we accept this universal definition for anime, the sooner we can resolve these arguments and differences. We can start breaking down the barriers for Japanese works acceptance in the West, which hopefully will break down barriers for Western works in the East. Hashtag world peace, hashtag anime for all. Now it's comments time. In my last video, I talked about God of High School, whether or not it's worth watching. And a lot of you guys said, yeah, it's worth watching. Even Malachi Blood said that this anime is the anime of the season for them. And Raka Wibisana who said that the animation for God of High School is top tier and they are excited to see more action scenes, but they only have a concern for the pacing of this anime. I mean, I think with any anime, when you see your manga turn into an anime or a webtoon, there is a little bit of the concern whether or not they're going to be leaving out important things or going too fast or too slow. And all we can hope is that they bring the manga or webtoon to justice. But either way, like you, I am looking forward to the next episodes of God of High School. And Gekido Ken says that we should check out Jujutsu Kaisen. I heard of Jujutsu Kaisen and I am looking forward to it when it comes out in October. And AJ, who says God of High School is the anime version of Tekken, I, I agree with that. And Straw Hat's Geo, a hey, Chicago gang, hey, what's up? But that is all I have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.